Big school. See you. Stand by. Stand by. Watch. I'll say, I'll say when. Yep. 15. 15 feet. Oh my god. Big school. Hold on. I'm wait till it gets just inside five. Okay. All right. Really good hard. Be violent with it, Mike. Be violent. Look here. Nice. Look here, Eric. Eric. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. You got him. <laughs> uh oh. oh boy. Uh oh. It's loaded, bro. I got it. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that net. Wait, take that camera. Dude. There's 50. Take the camera and try it in the holding water. You got enough. Do we need a real dump some of that? Uh, potentially, probably. Jeremy, run back here. Yeah, go ahead. We're definitely gonna dump some of this. Okay. We'll we'll see. Back to you. Yeah, we don't need that much, and we don't want to kill that right. much bait. Yeah, that's way more okay. than we're gonna need. Here. You can hold that. Yes. Okay. We'll do this with two guys because we don't want to lose too much. It is me. Okay, we're gonna control let some of this out. Okay. What? Ready? We can do a little more time. Okay, that net full of bunk. Right. Let, Look at that let, net full of it. Easily let a third of it out. <laughs> this is a new bait I just designed. It's been years and years of the making. This is an artificial lure here. This plug looks incredibly realistic. You won't see a realer looking plug than this. Solar powered, and it even works underwater. So every time you reel it in, it gets just enough sun to charge it up. See the mouth? Look, it looks real, doesn't it? Watch it swim, too. Even at three miles an hour, you pull it along. Look at that, see how it goes, the action goes to work? Pull up just a little bit, Mike. Look at the action on that. Looks just like a real bunker, doesn't it? It's incredible. Will be on the market soon. The most realistic bunker you'll ever see. Years and years I spent on this plug. My great great grandfather started doing the research. He passed it <laughs> along to my grandfather, my dad, and then me. And it's been mastered. I'll put an Amazon link in there so you can buy them. We are drifting left to right, okay? We're drifting to the starboard side. Look at all these fish we're about to run over because we're drifting left to right. Look at that, guys. Giant school off to the right. Returns are here, shadows are there. Because they're far apart, we know they're high in the water column. And you can see here they're high in the water column. Now it's time to become a fisherman, right? We found them, now we just gotta make them bite. All right, I'm gonna show you how we set a drift here to the side. I'm gonna turn the motor all the way to the side here because most boats will creep forward when it drifts. We want the, the uh, stern to swing back. We don't want it to come out in this way. Tommy's gonna put his out in the back because the boat's still creeping forward. Where's yours hooked, Tommy? In the mouth. His is hooked in the lips, in the top lip. Where's yours hooked, Mine's, Wayne? Uh, in the tail. In the tail, here's the middle bait. Michael's let his out now. Mike's is hooked. Now I gotta get a new one. <laughs> In the lip, but he's seen better days. He has seen better days. All right. Tommy's Michael. paying line out. Again, pay attention to the orientation of the motor. It's very important because you see it there, you want the boat to come this way because the boat's always gonna creep forward a little bit. If it's cut the other way, it'll do this. And all the lines will go off the, the back of the boat or even, to the, even uh, off the other side slightly. All right, Mike, every boat's different, of course. Some boats drift different depending if they have a T-top on them or not. What do we got in here? Surely there has to be a smaller one in the hole. Oh, that's the winner right there. You see that? Oh, oh no. no! That's a smaller one right here. Uh, Look at that one. Uh, oh, yeah. that's a baby. You see that? Now pick this one. Going with the smaller ones just because they get taken a lot uh, easier than some of these big ones. And Mike just doesn't swing for the fences. You know, he, 
He's, a, he's okay with a buck single, yeah. <laughs> Base hits win the game, man. Uh -huh. Alright. Pay it out, pay it out. Let's see the rig first. We are live lining out here. We are drifting live bunker. Trying to get the biggest stripers we can. That is a 9 knot uh, Mustad Demon Circle. In line, straight eye, no snell. You see the straight shank, it's not an inline. Those are leaked by law these days. And a nice barrel swivel, got a little junk on it. But there's a barrel, barrel swivel, and we have just 30 pound on 30 pound right here. You can use fluorocarbon if you wish. The bay is kind of muddy, so we're just using mono. So Mike's going to show you how we hook this one. We have no weight on this one, no beads, no nothing. Normally we will put a couple beads, but there's a drone over us. <laughs> we are being infiltrated. He's trying to see our rig. All right. You hear that? That was weird. All right. So he's hooking that one in the mouth. That one actually goes in the tail because it's got no weight. You see that, Tommy? Mm -hmm. All right, so these have no weight, so where are we putting them, Mike? I'm going to go through the tail, keeping it down low. Yeah, if I can get a hold of this. Yeah, the curl little circle hooks make it a little tricky sometimes. You're going in the anus? The anus. There you go. And why don't we hook it a little further in? Because we, you, what you'd wind up having to happen is, you know, it would go into itself and it prevent you from potentially, you know, catching that bass of the lifetime. That's right. You can't, yeah. can't have that happen. No, sir. No, no excuses. No excuses, man. All right, now Big Mike is going to show you how we rig a weighted line, and the only difference is two medium-sized split shots. Those are probably three-eighths right there. I made those. And a couple beads. And you put your beads above it. I know you do the opposite with an egg sinker. Egg sinker goes on top of these, so you don't hit your knot. But these split shots don't move, and if we put these beads down here, they wouldn't have room to make noise. Again, nine knot mustad demon circle, thirty the on demon. thirty pound the, test. We've got the demon over here. Let me go grab myself some fresh bone. And we don't use braid with live or cut bait ever, because we want the stretch, we want the shock absorption, we want that fish to grab that bait, mouth it, turn it around, try to swallow it and let the circle hook get it in its throat. And once the fish has it in its mouth, comfortable, down the throat, it will swim away from you, loading that mono, taking all the stretch out. All right, show us how we hook one with a weight. Okay. We go through the mouth like that. We're not gonna pin it shut because what could potentially happen is uh, the hook could go back into the fish and um, once again, you won't uh, you know, get that striper over a lifetime. That's right. You want that point exposed. Yeah, buddy. Right? See? That's a dangerous end. That's a dangerous bit right there. Yeah, yeah. You always want to have that exposed. Matter of fact, we had uh, Wayne had one rip off, rip off, rip off. Nothing. He left it out there because he still felt his bait swimming. 30 seconds later, it ripped off, ripped off, did the same thing. And See you later. Said, bring it in, check it, and bring it in. And sure as, sure as heck, he had the lips pinned shut and uh, the hook had turned. Wayne, no. Yep, and covered up the point. So Wayne learned a valuable lesson there. Sorry, Wayne, we love you. We're not ragging on you. <laughs> we love him. We How do you not him. love Wayne? We, we miss him already. Well, that's a prerequisite to be on this boat. You have to be a really cool human being or have a three-foot beard. <laughs> if you have a three-foot beard, nothing else matters. Just auto in. Tommy's a real bastard, but he met the prerequisite, so he's got the three-foot beard, so we have to live with him. <laughs> <laughs> when the fish bites, it's up to these guys' decision. You know, it's up to them what they want to do. If they want to feed the fish a little bit, let them have it for a bit before they go ahead and tighten the line, they can. It's up to them. If you're getting a lot of short strikes, let more line out. Get more line out. Get the bait further away from the boat. If you have a lot more line out there, a lot more stretch in that mono, the fish has a lot more time to play with it and mouth it. So if you're getting short strikes, fish keep coming off, keep coming off, let more line out, get more line away from the boat. And if you have braid, get rid of the braid. If you have a stiff graphite rod, get rid of it. You want a soft limber tipped rod. I love these striper stealth because they're a soft tip, but they're hard to get, you know, they're, they can't make them fast enough, unfortunately, because they're, so, uh, they're so good and they're so affordable. 
But if you want to search them, it's uh, ctfcatchthefever.com. Striper stealth rods, I help design them. I love to make all videos about them, but people are getting a little disappointed because they can't get them. That's what happens when you have a high quality product at a good price, to be honest with you. That's Crank, 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 crank. There you go. Now take him out. You got him hooked, brother. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's a good one. Jig on that. Keep jigging that. Yeah, don't ever go past that little. Uh, don't ever go past that little safety notch. You know the notch right there. Right. There's that hair past it. All right. You know the drag trick, right, Mike? Uh, Wayne, when it gets close, back your drag off just a very little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Yeah, well, we lose all our stretch on a short line. You guys have heard me say this before. Fish gets close, your angles get more violent, they get more drastic, and you lose all your stretch. Fish that get lost always get lost in the boat, so back your drag off just one click when he gets close to the boat. Especially if you're using braid, back off two clicks. That's a good fish, it's a good, strong fish. There you go. Nice! Oh, that's a nice one, man. Well done. Nice job, brother. Way to break that ice, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. To say the fishing has been tough is an understatement. Lots of marks. We had a hard time getting the bite because there's so many small fish in here. There you go. A little better, man. A little Let's healthier go. fish, a little stronger fish. Good job, Wayne. Let's send her back. You guys can find some kind of contour to drift your boat over when we're drifting these baits. We drifted over a hump. There was no fish on the other side. As soon as we came down on the, the upside, I'm sorry, the down current side of the hump. That's where this fish was, and this, the screen was lit up. We really could have had multiple multiples on that. Fins up. Dorsal fins up. I pull her forward and let her go. Goes. So nasty, right? Good one. Good job, brother. Yeah. There they are. Screen is lit up. Rare and day. All right, this was our drift line right here. We came across this hump. You can see how shallow it is right up on this hump. And we, as we drifted down, we marked a lot of fish right in here. And there's where we hooked up and we had uh, fish all over the screen. So we're gonna start again right in here and just drift back right next to our other line. Okay, you can see we're drifting down. Hold that rod behind you. See, we're drifting off of that hump right now. See those tight lines? That's the drop off. And there's fish. Here we are coming down that hump. There's fish sitting right there. This is where we've been hooking up, right here. Down current side. Mike just, Mike, that wasn't in the water. It was barely in the water. I don't dude. think it was in the water five seconds. Watch out. We, move some we need to run down, run down. I'm coming to the back. Run down. I'm trying to keep it tight. Nice. Holy cow, Mike. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna guess one second. <laughs> I don't think it was even two <laughs> seconds. I don't even think it was two, honestly. I mean, they were on the screen yeah, and you yeah, dropped yeah. it right on them. You even called it. That is crazy. Yep. Oof. Ah. Go great, Mike. That's a striper. That's a striper right there. That's a that's a, a fight on a short line. Yeah. We just pulled up to let another, 
Yeah, that's right. See those fish right here. We just seriously just stopped them, start drifting again. We came all the way to these buoys and we drifted out of this harbor, out of the mouth here, off into the river. What and, speed are we uh, drifting at today? Half a mile an hour, probably three quarters of a mile. We were drifting pretty fast. Yeah. And that's with no tide. Right. With the tide, we're going probably two or three. Good job, bro. You dropped that one right on his head. We're coming in. Beautiful fish. They're Mike. starting to pick up now, right? That's right. They're coming into the bay. This is the migratory fish. Hopefully, mm -hmm. they're getting even bigger. Fishing was tough early. It looks like it's picking up. Beautiful. Have at it, man. Good job, brother. Thank you. That's whack another one. Can you fit three? We got we got tons. Okay. Like this the other day though they didn't really bite in there right as the sun went down they really yeah, turned on yeah You can go to the other corner, opposite corner. If you feel you're comfortable, just because we have a dock line we want to avoid. Only if you're comfortable, I don't want you to pull in the motor. There you go. Wow, that's a decent fish. Don't let the line hit the boat, Mike. Wow, that's a good fish. It's a little better. <laughs> And we came right in. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Weird. What a weird day. <laughs> All right. This one, unfortunately, even though we had a circle hook, this fish swallowed it. It's smaller, and we are going to go ahead and take this fish because there's a good chance it's going to die. Why waste the meat, right? When you guys hear us talking about releasing fish, I mean, we're not poop pulling, you know, people who keep fish. Uh, we've kept fish before, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it as long as you, you know, do it conservatively. Not. I wouldn't recommend keeping every fish you catch and we're definitely not against keeping fish you know just uh times have changed you know these spawns have not gone as well as they were 10 15 20 years ago so uh we're keeping that in mind and we're just taking uh, only what we think uh is gonna die anyway right now but when the stuff is healthy and the stocks are back just be smart about it you know it is our our fishery we don't want to ruin our own fishery on us anything we can do to help we're gonna do you know so. what a crazy day <laughs> fishing is tough all right 
So we started the day with some live bait. You saw the bass on top, high in the water column. Caught one or two fish. But they wouldn't bite after that. Hours of nothing. Put some bait out on the bottom. It's been hours of nothing. All, all of a sudden, there they are. They're biting. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what a weird day. <laughs> Old school. Ooh. She gone. See you later. Good job, Tom. Nice time. Good job, man. You want to Don't forget. BBA, you can get your team old school jerseys, baby. There you go. As comfy as they get, man. That's right. Go to BBA, man. I'll put the link in there if you guys want to get the team old school jerseys. They are sweet. They do a really nice job designing these. Down the arms. You got team old school down the arm. Got your American flags on both sides. Does a real nice job. It's got two versions, one with a zipper up top, one with a regular crew neck, and then uh, the hoodies. But keep in mind, guys, these aren't like, you know, uh, t-shirts or, you know, a hook shirt or, or Under Armour. These are, these are meant to be outdoors every single day. You know, day after day after day after day and not fade and not fall apart. So really, really great quality. They won't fade. And I think the price is pretty darn good for, for what you get. I really do. I think the really fair price. You will say it, baby. BBA jerseys, he does a great job, man. He's yeah. a great guy, too. Fantastic, fantastic job. You can get on and off the ramp much faster if you work out a signal with the guy in the truck. We worked out a signal ahead of time with a flight. One up, two down, one up, two down, one up, two down. If I hit him with the light once, he's got to pull up a little. If I hit it twice, he's got to back down a little. Now, how much at a time? About a foot. Once you do it for a while, you're pretty close. You shouldn't have to make more than one adjustment. Tie changes things sometimes. All right, let's see. He is... Mm. Man, he's almost perfect. Yep. But for video's sake, I'll go ahead and give him one blast. Now he's going to pull up a little bit. Okay. About a foot, right? Now this is really gonna tick him off, but it's gonna be funny, okay? One, two. <laughs> now he's gonna be like, what the heck? I just pulled up I just All saw right. him throw his hands up. <laughs> Perfect. And if you know Tommy, like I know Tommy, he's not gonna find that fun. <laughs> but it's okay. He's a minor joke. Explain to him later. <laughs> All right, cool. 